Hello, my name is Paula Tyler and I am a junior at Emory University studying Anthropology and Human Biology. Today I'm going to talk to you about Calendula officinalis, Linnaeus, of the Asteraceae family, otherwise known as the common marigold. So the common marigold is really fascinating because there's already been quite a bit of research done on its medicinal uses and the findings are promising. The topics we are going to cover in this lecture include the botanical features of this plant, some of the chemistry and pharmacology unique to Calendula officinalis, an overview of documented traditional uses, in vivo and in vitro studies that illustrate its bioactivity, as well as some clinical studies, contraindications for this herb, examples of current uses, and some take-home points. Calendula officinalis is considered a cool season annual herb, but it is actually a perennial. As shown in the picture on the right, the flowers are rather small but very brightly colored and usually orange or yellow. The leaves are oval shaped, it prefers full sun and acidic clay or sand, and it is known to attract butterflies. It is indigenous to Europe, but it can be found in most warm temperate regions, including India and parts of North America. The distribution map in the bottom left shows where um, Calendula officinalis grows in North America, indicated by the green shading. One of the reasons the common marigold is of particular interest to ethnobotanists is the huge range of uses across multiple regions. There's documented use in Bangladesh, India, Italy, Portugal, Serbia, the United Kingdom, and the United States of America, just to name a few. It has been used for skin problems like infections, burns, inflammation, fungus, frostbite, wounds, and diseases like psoriasis and leprosy. In some areas, it is used for vascular issues like swollen legs, varicose veins, hemorrhoids, and varices. It is ingested to treat ulcers, liver problems, constipation, incontinence, throat and mouth inflammation, and to cause menstrual flow suppression. It has also been used for eye inflammation and infections. Depending on its application, it may be prepared as a tea, decoction, juice, an infusion, a cream, or dried. As we will discuss later on, the flowers seem to hold the most bioactive compounds, so it makes sense that this is the part of the plant that is most often cited for traditional use. In addition to the myriad of medicinal uses, common marigolds are sometimes used for food flavoring and color because it is so similar in color to saffron. In an ethnobotanical study conducted among farmers in western Canada, common marigold also has veterinary uses. The informants specify that they only use it for shallow wounds on cattle because the cicatrizing action can actually close the wounds too quickly and run the risk of trapping infection inside. Common marigolds also have a rather pungent odor, so there is documented use as an insect repellent. Clendial officinalis contains a diverse set of chemical constituents. The graph on the right highlights the relative content of compounds in different extractions, um, but the point is that common marigolds contain a high amount of polyphenolics, terpenoids, flavonoids, and antioxidants. A few of the most important compounds include those terpenoids with anti-edematous and anti-inflammatory action, flavonoids with antiviral and enzyme inhibition properties, and carotenoids with anti-inflammatory, choleritic cholagogue, antioxidant, and anti-proliferation properties. Interestingly enough, the astringent cicatrizing action cited by the Canadian farmers is not due to tannin content, which is a more common constituent in astringent plants. Some particularly important bioactive compounds that we'll see in a moment are shown on the bottom um, from left to right, ferrodiol is a terpenoid, quercetin is a flavonoid, and lutein is a carotenoid. Okay, so I think this is the coolest part. In vivo studies have shown that common marigolds have a lot of different activities. I won't go into too much detail on all of these studies, but the activities and their known or proposed biomechanisms of action are summarized in this table. Some results to note are that the traditional uses for common marigold are often supported. For example, the extract has a spasmolytic or spasmogenic action on animal jejunum or ileum, respectively, and the mechanism is similar to acetylcholine. So this stimulant or relaxant um, 
action supports its use for constipation. Um, the use for liver problems was supported by a study in rats that demonstrated hepatoprotective qualities of the extract and colorectal cholagogue activity, which basically means that it stimulates both the production and discharge of bile from the liver. Some of the uses cited most often were for inflammation and wound healing, and this was also supported in studies of mice and rats. Flower top extracts reduce swelling, mediate the inflammation response on a cellular level, and increase collagen synthesis. Other exciting findings included the results of a study in rats with induced diabetes, where a 100 mg per kilogram dose of an 8.7% extract completely restored blood and urine glucose back to normal levels and lowered lipid levels in blood serum. In another study, lutein, as a particularly potent antioxidant carotenoid constituent, um, delayed mammary tumor latency by 50 days when 0.002% calendula officinalis extract was fed to mice as a dietary supplement. In vitro studies have further supported the effect of common marigolds on the immune system and healing. A methanol extract is an effective antimicrobial for both gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria, while the ethanol extract is more effective against Staphylococcus aureus and Enterococcus faecalis. Both extracts were effective antifungals as well. An organic extract showed antiviral activity against HIV-1 by inhibiting reverse transcriptase and mediating cell fusion. Multiple compounds appear to be implicated in enzyme inhibition properties because another study showed that a 1-3% to extract was more effective than the flavonoid quercetin alone in slowing down proteolytic enzymes. In this case, they were studying matrix metalloproteinases, which degrade collagen as part of periodontal disease. Besides the inhibition of proteolytic enzymes, like the, mat the matrix metalloproteinases, the traditional use of common marigold for mouth inflammation may be further supported by studies of mouthwashes containing the extract. A clinical study of a mouth rinse containing 1% calendula officinalis flower extract concluded that further study in humans is safe and proposed that the aqueous nature of the mouth rinse in small concentrations made it less effective than expected. Another larger clinical study in France examined the application of a commercialized calendula officinalis cream manufactured by Boiron Limited for radiation dermatitis caused by post-operative radiotherapy. Um, the actual product they studied is pictured in the bottom right. The study included women aged 18 to 75 undergoing treatment from 1999 to 2001 after surgery for non-metastatic breast adenocarcinoma. Radiation therapy can cause acute skin toxicity, which is graded from 0 to 4 based on erythema or redness, edema, and necrosis. Compared to trolamine, a standard prophylactic agent, acute skin toxicity of grades 2 to 3 occurred in 41% of women using the common marigold cream. It occurred in 63% of women using trolamine. Less pain and more overall satisfaction with erythema prevention was reported for those using the calendula cream, and the objective measures in the study indicated that it was a safe alternative to trolamine and actually superior. Although calendula officinalis is generally recognized as safe for both culinary and cosmetic uses, as a member of the Asteraceae family, it contains sesquiterpene lactone allergens. Individuals with known allergies to this family should avoid using this herb. This Bird's Beef Shaves Cream features common marigold as truly golden for men's skin, but you'll want to make sure you aren't allergic first. More research needs to be done to conclusively declare calendula officinalis as safe for use by women who are pregnant, nursing, or trying to get pregnant. Uterotonic effects have been demonstrated in vitro, and high doses of similar compounds found in cori coriander oil decrease litter size in rats. Additionally, high doses of common marigold are sedative and hypotensive. It may have additive effects when combined with sedative, hypotensive, hypoglycemic, antihyperlipidemic, and insulin secretagogue drugs.
Currently, calendula officinalis is used widely as a complementary and alternative therapy, and it is still being studied for biomedical uses. Synthesis and modification of some compounds, especially terpenoids, are being studied as potential phar pharmacophores. Ferrodiol, the cytaxarine type triterpenoid we have discussed previously, has increased anti-inflammatory action when polar groups are added to it. In complementary and alternative med medicine, various formulations and combinations of the herb can be found just about everywhere and in every form. Examples of more traditional over-the-counter alternative products include Tramiel and Otacom eardrops. Clinical studies of Tramiel, which contains 450 milligrams per 100 grams of calendula officinalis indicate that it is well tolerated and a viable alternative to NSAIDs for inflammation and pain relief. As shown in the bottom right, Tramiel comes in many forms. Otacon otic eardrops are also well to tolerated and efficacious alternatives um, indicated by clinical studies. As a disclaimer, please carefully research and use caution when considering adding any dietary supplement, topical product, or internal product to your routine. Calendula has a long history of ethnomedicinal use in Europe, India, and North America. The high terpenoid, flavonoid, and carotenoid content lended a wide range of bioactivities, including antimicrobial, antiviral, anti-inflammatory, anti-edematous, immunomodulatory, spasmolytic, spasmogenic, anti-diabetic, anti-hyperlipidemic, anti-tumor, antioxidant, and hepatoprotective mechanisms. These have been demonstrated by various in vivo, in vitro, and clinical studies. These properties support its use for internal and external inflammation, liver problems, and wound healing, and warrant further study for novel uses. The effects of long-term use, dosage and formulation standardization, sustainable collection, isolation, and synthesis of compounds for drug development, and the elucidation of mechanisms of action are all important fo focus areas for future research. In conclusion, calendula officinalis is a small herb with a big future. Thank you so much for watching.